Well, a very good afternoon to you and how you be at 2 o'clock and 23 seconds to go right along with it, coming to you live from my mother's basement. Trusted Beard here, you there, hanging out with you today for episode 2 of the Gamers We Care podcast show. And they leave it to me to kick it off, huh? I mean, all right, Mizzy, uh, it's on me. And uh, I know typically we do have guests here. Uh, this episode two will not be having a guest. And uh, I wanted to go solo today for two reasons. A, to introduce myself. Oh, as I lose my place here on my notes. <laughs> A, to introduce myself and tell you a couple of stories about me and how I got to where I am today. And then B, to give some praise and show some love to the founder of Gamers We Care, Mizzy. There is no such thing as a bad idea. So many good ideas have come out of bad ideas. Out of negative experiences come positive outcomes. That positive outcome for me, in this case, was Mizzy. Today, I'll share two stories with you. One negative one of how I became the leader of TFR, resulting in a positive outcome. And yet another negative story of how I met Mizzy, and well, obviously, <laughs> the positive outcome that's come from it today. If you learn anything from me today, it's to fight. To fight with all your might. You just have to keep fighting and never, never give up. Because out of the darkness, the light will eventually shine through. If you let your mind not be fooled or tricked or dissuaded, positive outcomes will result. There are good people in this world. I promise you that. And we are trying very hard to find them and make sure they know that and they feel the love too. And sometimes that's all you need to get by. Mizzy has gotten me through a number of dark times in my life and I couldn't be more grateful. She offers her help to you as well. This is not for money. This is not for fame. This is for you. She wants to reach you out there. The one who's depressed. The one who may just be down in the dumps and, and needs a little pick-me-up. And even the person who is completely happy and content and who just wants to be able to share and spread some love themselves. Friends helping friends. That's what this is about, whether it's TFR or whether it's Gamers We Care, it's about friends helping friends. That's how I see it. And you know what? They may not even be your friend right now. It may be somebody down the road, some, some person you hold a door for. Maybe your future spouse that you just did the right thing for. But if it's you that takes the initiative to extend that helping hand, then maybe that time you will create that friendship. And who knows where it will take you? Perfect example of me and Mizzy right here and where it's brought us today. Out of the mess that was my life, trying to lead a battlefield platoon with absolutely zero, zero experience, no gaming experience, no nothing, and the backstabbing treachery that came with it, came a relationship that has brought me a true friend, someone that's actually caring, a genuinely good person. And contrary to popular opinion, there are still people that care in this world. I have 222 of them in TFR right now. We have hundreds in the GWC Discord. These are people that care. And they're all over the world, whether it's in the gaming community or just spread out around. And we want to bring more people into that fold. One person at a time. We will help change the gaming community for the better. Overshadowed by a mountain of hate, GWC will be that shining light through the dark clouds that is so desperately needed in these dark times. Ever so dark, considering where this country is right now, or where the world is right now. And it starts right here, right now. With that said, let me tell you two stories. The first one will be how I came to power, and the treachery I caused along the way. 
and the second will be a handwritten story, so I'll be reading to you, of how I met Mizzy and the horrible situation surrounding it. And what I'm hoping to get from this is for you to see all the negative stuff that has gone on and all the positive stuff that has come out of it. And if you can harness that in your life, you know, and, and not let the negative stuff get you down, it's going to get you down. But get you down for too long. And, and, and keep working to improve yourself, to better yourself in whatever way it is. I know my life, and if you were here for the last podcast, you know, certain aspects of my life are a disaster. Um, but the one thing I am good at here is with the TFR and, and taking care of that. And I've turned the negative, all the negative, into positive. And of course, we still deal with it, but you know, you take a step back and you sit down and you look and you think about, gosh, four years ago, from where I first joined to where I am today, um, you know, and where, where we've come. It, it, it's just astounding, um, despite all the negativity that has been come, that has come my way. Um, so this first one will be off the cuff. Um, I hope I can... Uh, Oritate? Orator? Some sort of word like that. Um, but I hope I can tell it well. I'm not the greatest of storytellers. I can ramble. Um, so let me sit back here, take a sip of my water. Uh, you guys might want to do the same. And uh, let me tell you a little story. I had hernia surgery. Um, a little hernia above my belly button, no major big deal, but I was going to be off of work for eight weeks, so I figured, hey, let me buy a PlayStation. That was my first PlayStation experience ever. 2016, I'm 24, five years old, first online gaming experience with other people. And I find a clan, I get in the Battlefield, I thought Battlefield was amazing, and I think it still is, it's the greatest game ever, by the way. Um, and <clears throat> we get going. Um, I find Rob, this guy Rob, takes me in, and we start playing. I had a blast. It was Battlefield 1. Um, it was a lot of fun. I never had experienced anything like that in my gaming experience. Um, and I meet some people along the way. Rob was a kind-hearted individual. Um, certainly was. Um, meet some other wonderful people as well. And we go through Battlefield 1. Um, all fun and games. And... He wasn't concerned about who we brought in. We were just looking to bring people in, and that's okay. I get it, but, you know, the one bad apple spoils the bunch kind of thing. So, move on. We get to Battlefield 5. We take our break, and we come back for Battlefield 5. Rob, I'm still around. We got about 20, 25 of us. Rob makes me a leader. I'm obviously a personable person. I'm here doing this podcast with you. Uh, so, I can talk to people. I'm, uh, I'm good at that. And he makes me a recruiter and a leader. So, I start recruiting. And, of course, I'm messaging people in my time frame because I'm taking pictures of scoreboards. Uh, I'm shooting the messages out that are people playing at my time. And, meanwhile, Rob's got a late-night shift. And he works late night, uh, can only play super late at night, lives on the West Coast. So I'm bringing in all the people that, um, and if I actually could find my uh, notes here, uh, I'm bringing in all the people now uh, at my time zone. They're also meeting me when they come in. So they're thinking, you know, I'm a leader, which I am, but eventually I start to think I'm the main leader because I'm always in Discord, I'm always the one talking. And why am I saying this? It's because this is where my takeover slowly and unintentionally happens. And yeah, I hurt some people along the way. Um, and I don't know if it was the right or wrong thing to do. You guys be the judge of it. I hope I've learned from my mistakes and I try and treat people better. Um, but uh, So this is, again, just continuing on. Um, <clears throat> What happened was, uh, as I start recruiting, right, I, I can pick and choose who I bring in a little bit more because I'm the one doing it, and I'm also not liking the people that have been in TFR for a while for the past number of years. Why? A, they're leaders not doing any work, and B, they're not good people. And here's the toxicity part. I mean, <sighs> let me say this. Look. PlayStation video games is a wonderful thing. Why? Because we have nothing to judge anybody on besides who they are as a person. 
And that's the great part about the, the, the thing I've learned so much about people is, is, is because of that. It's, it's something like this, and I'm not sure the exact president. It was JFK versus the other uh, incumbent president. And, because, and, and they did a poll. And the incumbent president, who was not as good looking, not as tall, not as handsome and all that stuff, went on radio and the people that listened to that presidential election on the radio or that debate on the radio thought the guy on the radio did better. But then when it was up to the people on the TV to vote, they voted for JFK and they said JFK did better. Why? Because he was better looking, he presented himself better, and that's an important thing. And it's important to recognize here in the gaming community is that you have nothing to judge people on besides who they are as individuals, right? I mean, what you hear com coming out of this headset right here and coming out of my mouth, or coming into the headset and out of my mouth, is, is all you have to judge somebody on. And it, it, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, I... You get to learn so much. No, no, no predisposed hatred or, or, or judgments. Oh, you're not as good looking or, or, or you're fat or, or you're skinny or, or you've got a crooked teeth or you've got a big nose, you know? <laughs> you know, there's none of it. Nobody knows I'm five foot six, you know? They just hear me for me and who I am. And you hear that through the other people and the people you get to associate yourself with. You spend hours of your life with these people playing games. You know, it's more than just playing games with somebody and to have somebody. No, it's about creating a friendship. It's about creating community. It's about, it's about that. And it's about helping each other out. You know, friends helping friends. I know so much about so many of my members' lives. Stuff I won't share with you. I've cried with them. I've laughed with them. I, I, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. And, and if you don't have something like this, if you're not part of something like this, or if you're part of a toxic environment, get out and find a new one. Find a good one. Because I promise you, it will help you. It's helped me. It's the only thing that helps me get through my life and the struggles I go through. This place is my sanctuary. And maybe Gamers We Care can be your sanctuary too. So getting back, as I ramble, <laughs> to TFR and what was going on, was <clears throat> I saw that toxicity, and it wasn't that sanctuary, and I wanted to change it. So I set out to do that. And <sighs> my hope was I end up running this. You know, I, he just, Rob hands me the lead and says, hey, Beard, you know, you take over. Um, you know, you've done so much. You worked so hard. I hope I'm not shaking the screen here. Um, you've worked so hard at this. You, you've tried, you know, you, you put in so much effort. You, you do a real good job to take over. But that, that's foolish. Why would he want to give up something he worked for, he started, he created to me and let him step down and be second fiddle? That's, that's pointless. I, I, I get that. So I should have left in February when I had the chance early on before it all, you know, developed. Now, eventually, which will lead into the second story, I bring in this guy, Max Red. And Max was a nice guy, great guy. I knew he was going to be great for the platoon. Um, and we'll just kind of continue on to that. And that's in April. And now comes July. And one of the members is saying I should split off from the platoon and I should go do my own thing. And I really wanted to. I wanted to lead. And for so many various reasons, so many disagreements I had, which was affecting the mental health of my members, of our members, I wanted to change things, and I wanted to do things differently than he did, because this was affecting their mental state. This gaming, this competitive gaming atmosphere was affecting their mental state, and I'm sure the people in their chats, the negativity, the, the, <laughs> the, the drug use with, with children sitting right next to them, which is despicable, you know, affected them. And it affected the good ones, and the good ones left, and the asshole stayed. And I don't curse in my streams, and I hope that's not a curse word, and if it is, I don't care, I'll say it again, the asshole stayed. I don't care how good you are at your game. It's about who you are as a person. And those are the people you need to surround yourself with because that affects you mentally. 
And Gamers We Care is about mental health. TFR is about mental health. This is all about mental health. Surrounding yourself with good people is, it will improve your mental health. Your friends, you know, you are your friends, that saying goes. And you, you need to recognize that. And I recognized that, and I tried to make a change. And after losing four comp matches in a row to some of the best battlefield platoons out there, uh, guys quitting, saying they're giving up, and the platoon kind of falling apart and a little in disarray, and, and, and bad decisions being made, in my opinion, um, I decided to leave, knowing I would take at least three quarters of the group with me and all the active ones and all the ones I liked and the good ones, you know, and causing a rift. And, and, and what I say, I, I tell Rob I leave. And um, we cry to each other on the phone. We yell, he screams, like, you can't leave. Um, and I almost came back, you know, out of guilt. But I had to do what was right by me, you know, and what was right for me. And, you know... We have to recognize that portion of our life, too. You know, you do have to do right by you. And I think I had to do right by... Because I had goals. I had ambition. I had a dream. I had... I had desire to do something more than just be a video game clan. Than just be another video game clan that comes and dies after, you know, a year or two. I have more than that. I have more goals. And... If TFR dies and Gamers We Care is what comes out of it, so be it. And that would be wonderful. Whatever happens, you know, I'm okay with it because at this point, I've succeeded. I have think, I hope, I've helped people. I know, I have gotten messages from members saying, you know, if it wasn't for TFR, they would have done bad things. Um, you, you know, and just imagine. Um, you know, we've helped people. And, you know, Gamers We Care has helped people. And if you are in need, come. Come to us. And we're here to help. We're here to try and at least be a friend, you know, to hang out with, to forget your problems. And that's how I always dreamed TFR would be. And that's what happens when I make that split. And I leave TFR. Um, Rob leaves TFR too out of anger, spite whatever the case may be. And I've never mended that friendship, sadly. And I'm sure he's hurt and probably still thinks about it every day. And I'm truly sorry. Um, I felt like I had no other option. It was leave, try and take over, or try and work with him. And maybe I could have tried and worked with him and gave him more effort and energy and, and, and tried to persuade him. But in the end, it was his way if he wanted it and I wanted to do things my way was that selfish was that inconsiderate I don't know but for my mental health <laughs> and for my well-being and my happiness I had to do something you know I could have just left and not done anything but I wanted to lead um, I felt like I could do good somewhere somehow some way improve somebody's life make them feel better and um, I hope I've accomplished that so far and I have a lot more work to do and we have a lot more work to do. So, uh, there goes Rob and a broken friendship and a number of lost friends along the way as I kicked out leader after leader for not doing work in the platoon and, and all that negativity. <clears throat> and the only person that benefited was myself, right? Is it? The only person that whole thing benefited, really, at that point in time, was myself. And I wasn't going to let that happen. No way. No way was I going to let that happen because it's not about me, you know? It wasn't ever supposed to be about me. Yes, I believe all people are inherently selfish. And yes, did I like the power? Yes. Did I, I, I'm not going to lie. Did I like the respect? Yes. Did I, do I, and I, do I still? Yes. Do I like, <clears throat> do I like everything that comes around it? Yes. That comes with it. Yes. I'm the decision maker, you know? It, it, it's all nice, right? 
But why can't one hand wash the other and both hands wash the face? Why can't that happen? Why can't I get something from myself and still help people along the way and create friendships? And then eventually, eventually, it all comes together because now we're not doing it just because it helps me or it helps somebody else or I'm trying to get, because, because we all want to help each other because you've developed friendships, you've built relationships. I don't have a girlfriend, I don't have a boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gay, but um, I, I don't have a boyfriend, you know, if you're a girl. I don't have a spouse. I don't have a brother. I don't have a sister. I don't have any of that. Um, I have, you know, I have myself, and I have my friends here with us. And those are the ones who help me get through my day. You know, whether it's a violet, a smoke, a, and all these people back stick down all these people mizzy joe gosh i'm sure i'm going to be leaning on papa paw soon all these people are people you can rely on you know come join us you know find your person that cares about you you know develop that friendship all it takes is extending that hand sometimes a lot of us gamers are introverts I'm an extrovert. A lot of us are introverts, and we rec I recognize that, and, and we don't know where to go. But <clears throat> there is a place, just sometimes all you got to do is just muster up the courage, and that's why it gets back to tricking your brain into doing things, into making sure, you know, you know, just fighting. It's fighting. Just fight. Fight through it. Find a friend. He'll help fight with you. You know, and in that moment of non-depression, in that moment of clarity, when you're okay, message him or her and say, hey, next time I'm depressed, next time I'm down, you know, make sure you tell me to fight because that's what I really want to do, you know, in that moment of clarity. And, and sometimes you just need that support, you know, obviously, like Papa Paul said, if you haven't seen a mental health specialist Make sure you're going to see one. That is the first and foremost priority of all this. Um, I never have, and this is all my life experiences. So, um, at least with regards to any of this. Um, so, I've done things my own way. Is it the wrong way to go about it? No, it's the school of hard knocks. You know, it was some stupid, foolish ways. And there were some very low points in my life. And in my time here. Excuse me. Um... And if I saw a mental health specialist, I, I bet you I would be in a better place, and I would have been in better places in those times, so I would suggest doing that, everybody. And I had seen one a uh, year, number, number of years ago, and for me it was beneficial. So if you're wondering if it is, it, very, it, it, it more than likely will be, and maybe you just need to find the right person. Um, so I just want to advocate that again quickly. Um, having said all that, um, and kind of rounding out how I kind of took over TFR and hurt people along the way. Um, from there, it was a roller coaster ride of comp teams and meeting horrendous people, horrible people to the point where I almost wanted to quit TFR because of the way things have gone. And I lost people close and near and dear to my heart due to stuff like that, due to poor decision making, due to bad leadership. All from the school of hard knocks is how I learned. And, and these guys have stuck by, by me because they're true friends. And they're good people. And, um, <clears throat> and one big circumstance, one big issue, one big thing that had come um, and developed. <clears throat> and it was shortly after I took over. Um, well, there's a lot of things, uh, was this Mizzy situation. It was how I got to meet Mizzy. And, and, and again, just trying to now bring some positive back to it all, as I tell you yet another negative story. Um, I will read this here, so bear with me as we go. Um, this starts here in August, late August. Uh, I had... Uh, Major players, I guess, were me, uh, a guy named Jesus Freak, uh, we'll call him Jesus, a guy named Max, and Mizzy. Um, <clears throat> it started around August 18th of 2019 and lasted through August 27th. Um, it was when I had just taken over. I took over early July, I'd say, um, and uh, we were transitioning into you know, 
my reign as leader of TFR. And I'm not sure, too sure when the talks began between Max and Jesus here. Uh, I have a strong feeling it was began directly after we kicked Jesus from the platoon. Jesus was in TFR, but he used mouse and keyboard. Another big thing, again with TFR, class, pride, respect, and organization. We don't cheat. We don't do things the wrong way. We treat people with respect, and we care for each other. And that's important to me. And no cheaters. You know, that's just very important. You know, is, is, I mean, and it goes in everyday life, you know. If you're a cheater in a video game, you know, you might be a cheater in real life. You know, you might just not be the greatest individual because you could see selfish behavior coming off of that. Trying to be better than everybody else by taking a cheat. Look at the steroid users in baseball. Um, anyways, I digress. <laughs> Uh, Max wanted to have the best comp team in Battlefield. He had brought a number of people in that were phenomenal players, but each one having their problems, whether it was not being a part of the community, and being an asshole, um, or just, you know, um, uh, necessarily not being a good person or being suspicious. Um, <clears throat> I had a lot of conversation with these guys and uh, over this whole, uh, this, at least 10 hours through these 10 no, well, it had to be 20, 30 hours through those 10 days here. And one night, Max approached me about forma forming a new type of, uh, of platoon. It was going to be an all-star team, pulling a couple of our members from TFR, who had a couple really good ones, to create the best North America team around, and for me, myself, here, to run the community. I was definitely interested to speak further about it, but I told him TFR would and always will come first, and I would be happy to help out, especially if it means letting some of, you know, my own TFR guys take the next step to the next level somewhere else aside from TFR because I'm not going to be selfish and, and keep them if they can expand and get better somewhere else if I can uh, afford that for them. So he informed me there would be two other leaders and one of which has connections with DICE. He did not give names, however. And um, <clears throat> I told him exactly this. If you're selling me on the fact that I could get with DICE, I don't care. And DICE is the Battlefield uh, organization here that uh, kind of runs Battlefield and like created it. I'm not taking shortcuts. I'm willing to put in the work. But I am interested enough to hear it out. And that's the way I am. I, I want to, and you should all be that way, is respect. You get your respect through work. Hard work. Nothing else. No BSing. No lying. No, no, no cutting corners. Through hard work and dedication is how you get your respect, and the growth that comes with it is, is, is exponential. <sighs> he then, Max then, broached the subject of emerging, of merging TFR, my clan, and XLGN, which was definitely out of the question. XLGN apparently was Mizzy's clan at that point. She was the leader, main leader. I'm pretty sure I'm not exactly 100%, so don't quote me on that. Uh, I always believed in mergers never work, and <clears throat> so on and so forth there. Um, <clears throat> I was still willing to meet with the next people, whoever they were. So Max gets us all in a group chat following five days later, and I immediately see Jesus Freak, and my alarms start going off. That was the guy I just kicked from TFR, who was the mouse and keyboard user, who was essentially a cheater, at least in our group's eyes. Um, so I figured this wouldn't work from the start. And two hours of talking ensues, and Mizzy tells me who she is and what she's looking for, the best comp team. And she gave in to being okay with mouse and keyboard, morally speaking, where I obviously hadn't. And that's obviously a debatable issue. She has run XLGN for years and had the resume to back up her claims and her desires. Her platoon has never reached the height she was looking for in the comp scene. And definitely the makings of a good partner. I mean, gosh, was she impressive with that resume. I mean, who am I coming into this to this lady? I, holy crap. So I was excited, at least at that point, to, to, to meet her. And uh, she was intelligent. She was logical, open-minded, and willing to explore and discuss every potential problem. And now Jesus starts his talk, and he informs me that his desire was to form a platoon and build a large platoon with the best comp team in North America, which was different than the all-star team that Max had originally proposed to me. So because I'm listening to Miz and I heard Max explain the basics and a few nights before, I was wondering why they wanted me. Because what was I here to do, you know? So 
if in Max's case, you know, was I going to leave an all-star team? What what would you need me for? It's not a community. There's nothing uh, of that nature. That's what I'm, you know, apparently good at. So <clears throat> Miz has the connections. Jesus has the comp scene. And Max is the one who brought us together. And come to find out later, apparently is the mastermind behind all the advanced strategies for our comp team as well. And you'll come to find out about that. He said to Jesus, not word for word, but... Beard came up with the basic strats, and I, Max, came up with the advanced strategies for the team. So, having now seen my first and second set of lies here and starting to question things, in my opinion, he was selling himself to Jesus and Miz that he was an essential part of the comp side of TFR and essential for the new platoon. But why would you need Beard? I asked myself. So I was chosen because I would do the community side of things. So now I ask myself... If we just had an all-star team of 12 to 20 guys, what community is there to run? Things aren't adding up. So I continue to talk with Max and, and Mizzy, and I listen, and I tell them I'm fully invested in TFR, um, and we want to, and they're telling me we want to advance to the next level and quickly. We conclude the night of chatting with my opinions, and I let them know that TFR will always be my first, and I will be happy to help where I can. I tell Jesus I think we should be honest about the mouse and keyboard and not lie, but I also respect the fact that he comes out and says he's mouse and keyboard, and I do. I mean, he doesn't lie about it. So I tell Mizzy she seems like a great leader, which obviously she is, and um, and I lost my place, and she had the resume to back it up. And while saying all of this, I'm wondering, you know, um, uh, we conclude the meeting, I guess I should say, by saying I'm willing to take the next step, but there's a lot of kinks we need to work out. As any smart businessman does, and as any person should do, do your homework. I reached out privately. And this goes in life. It's not just leading a platoon, because I treat this platoon as a business, right? And whatever your life is, this stuff should all equate somewhere, whether it's a relationship or something like that. Do your homework. If you're a girl and you're going on a first date with a guy, you should do your homework and Instagram and check his Facebook and make sure he's not a creep. Because I reached out privately to each of the business partners to find out who they are and also ask why they chose Max to be on the deal. Because I did not want him a part of it. I was already now questioning Max's intentions. So Mizzy was skeptical from the start about Max and thank God I went to Mizzy. And this is where our relationship started beginning. Now, you know, essentially, she had a great resume. It was I wanted to introduce myself to her. I wanted to pick her brain at the very least. And um, I thought she was wonderful. And I had already had problems with Max personally through an own TFR issue um, with regards to money and stuff like that. Um, I ended up having to foot a bill or something like that. So it was just a reason, not the money was the issue, it was just the reason I didn't trust him. There was other issues as well starting to go into things. Um, so... That's that. Um, but because I did not want him to take a part in it, I do go in and start questioning. And she specifically tells me, you know, um, she thought Max was a talker. Beware of talkers. And she said that to me. And I couldn't agree more. She's run into a lot of people like that, and she said she learned her lesson the hard way. <laughs> so did I, she tells me. She instructed Max to set up a Discord server over a previous weekend, and he couldn't even do that, she said. He talked about becoming a video editor and buying all the software, and because he couldn't be much better than the pros, uh, he couldn't be, he couldn't, uh, and he can be much better than the pros that do it, because even though never having it, you know, he, he could do it in a couple months. So it all started to add up, and I started to realize, you know, who I was dealing with, and <clears throat> I realized that I've got my wagon attached to the wrong horse here. I need to be with Mizzy, because she's the genuine. She's the one who actually has the right ideas and is the not selfish one. So this is what made me start to think. After she tells me all those things, and I tell her my suspicions, um, with the NSK, con with the controller giveaway, and ship the thing and never ship it, all that stuff, um, <clears throat> you know, all of it. I mean, gosh, I'm going through pages here of, of this, which doesn't need to be um, brought up here. Uh, gosh, I didn't even look at this. And, hmm. Well, anyways, we go through it and we discuss. We have a great discussion because we're honest, and I apologize for my alarm there. We have a great discussion about it, and we, we learn a lot about each other. And that's, again, the great thing about these 
these headsets. I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know who she was. But I heard the honesty, the sincerity in her voice. And you can hear that and listen for it when you play games with people. You know, it's that sincerity, the, the, the actual caringness, that the, the, do the right thing. You can see that in her. And uh, she amazed me through this all. Um, <clears throat> so the business plan kind of ends up falling apart. We decide not to go through with this. And um, <clears throat> what happened was, I guess, long story short, at this point, um, the business deal falls off. And Max had been in talks with um, a number of my players. And he was going along no matter what, making this all-star team with or without me. He tried to do the right thing and include me. And um, I guess I would have been pushed off to the side at the end. Um, but he had, in his words, eight guys ready to go from TFR to join Jesus um, and his comp team. And he said that in a party chat with me and Jesus. Uh literally said that and I was floored stunned hurt utter disbelief um I had kicked Max I guess at that point for doing the knowing he was backstabbing me and everything and he said I got eight guys ready to go luckily he left with him his brother who was a very nice kid but obviously his brother and um one other guy and then I lost two more along the way and uh it ended up becoming a very dark time for TFR for the next few months um, to the point where I almost gave up TFR. But during that time, and out of all that time, you know, in the months after, all of that negativity, that toxicity, that, that, that hatred, the, the, the backstabbing, the treachery after all, all of that, from that day forward, Mizzy and I talked at least once a week, and we became really close at points, and then, then GWC, and uh, all of that, and and she helped me get through some of the darkest times for TFR, where the point where I was going to shut down. Um, and she's been there ever since. She's my light. Um. She's my guide. She's always there. Um, I mean, gosh, I can go on and on about the things I want to say about her. Um, she's got a great heart. She really wants to help. She's seen suicide, depression. She's lived through it. Close family members who have been through some of the most horrible things and she's instead of bottled it up and not talked about it and not done anything about it she's she's grabbed the bull by the horns and said I'm not gonna let this happen to anybody else I'm not gonna let this happen to the world and she sees it we see it you see it all around you so go out reach out to somebody in need if you're in need, reach out to me. Reach out to Mizzy. Join the Gamers We Care Discord. Jump on the Twitter. Reach out to us. We'll be here. I'll play a game with you. I'll help get your mind off things. We'll have some laughs. And maybe that's all you need. Maybe you just need a new friend. Mizzy was mine, and she's been mine. Um, And I can't be more grateful for it. Cup of Joe, who will be uh, bringing you some podcasts as well. Uh, is another dear friend. And gosh, another story I can get into that's another 45 minutes to an hour long of the treachery and backstabbing uh, that me and him had to deal with and the absolute despicable behavior. Um, and I guess I should probably harp on that as well. You girls be careful out there, okay? Um, You only have a headset to judge people by, right? And I said that in the beginning, and it's in a beautiful thing. But people can lie. People can and will lie. And they do. And they are inherently selfish. So I have rules in my own clan, and you should 
maybe take them on to your own life. Minimum three months before you really know somebody. At least start to trust them. And six months before you actually really start to trust them. Because six months goes by, eventually they slip. And something comes up. And that's my rule. And I did that with TFR and my leadership. And I've taken that into my real life. And it doesn't have to be three and six and firm, steady. But use that. Utilize that in your life. And realize you don't really know somebody until you know somebody. And... Joe and I have shared that experience. Uh, maybe one day we'll do a podcast about that. I actually really want to touch on that at some point. Um, you girls need to be careful out there. There's a lot of thirsty. Is that what the uh, the kids say these days? Old boomer beard over here. Um, there's, a, the, the, there's a lot of thirsty boys out there. Just be careful and um, respect yourself and... Uh, I mean, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, <clears throat> getting back to Mizzy. Uh, having gone through all of those turbulent times um, and then eventually coming out of it by December and kind of combining these two stories now from the first one and the second one, um, you know, Mizzy asked us to do the Gamers We Care. Uh, I got something on my toe. What is that? Hmm. <laughs> uh, Mizzy asked me to do um, the gamers we care with her and we put on that first event with Catalyst, Flu, uh, Neon, uh, Deadeye, and Catalyst, Flu, Neon, Deadeye. Oh no. Who am I missing? Catalyst, Flu, Neon, Deadeye. And SMK Gaming. Oh, how about that? Uh, and SMK Gaming. And uh, it was an absolute blast. This is our second, you know, uh, dive into this. Um, we're doing the podcast now. I'm sure we're going to be doing another, you know, charity event. Uh, so please stay tuned. Um, and, uh, uh, we'll hopefully have a good time with that. Um, what else? Oh, my events. Um, so I'm going to be definitely bringing in some, some speakers. Uh, personally, I would like to show, you know, kind of what TFR has to offer. Um, I'm sure... Mizzy and Joe will be bringing in more professionals. I'm more about hard knocks in life and learning the hard way and kind of just talking, um, maybe relating experiences to you guys uh, more or less. So I would like to personally just bring in other platoon leaders, um, personal TFR members, because the TFR members, they're so vast and diverse, uh, whether it's people from different countries and we could have a conversation about different cultures, uh, whether it's Walk the Gutters, who will be coming uh, and said he would, uh, personal fitness trainer, um, martial artist, uh, very knowledgeable, on all that stuff, uh, definitely, I'm certified, I'm sure, in many areas, um, Dax Delta, uh, 20 plus, I think, year, uh, career cop, uh, he was a canine, you know, detective, uh, I think he even worked for the DEA for a little bit, um, and have just some, some roundtable discussions, uh, I'm very comfortable with them, uh, so we could have some very frank and hopefully fun discussions about some interesting topics along the way here, um, Aside from that, uh, I did want to keep this podcast here to 45 minutes. And actually, wow, we're at, we're at 43 minutes. Do any of you have any questions? Anything you would like to answer here or I can answer for you? Um, anything? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, anything. If not, no worries here. Uh, I'll probably just leave you with a couple parting notes. Um, you know, I fought real hard to get where I got. I did hurt a couple people along the way. Um, but I think the amount of people I helped has far outweighed it. And aside from one or two good people here or there maybe that I did hurt, uh, I guess intentionally, but, you know, um, it was, I guess, quite my only action. Um, or it felt like. With those people... Um, <clears throat> You know, I I don't almost feel bad for doing what I did because they're not good people. And I'm not here to help the bad ones. I'm here to help the good ones. Those are the ones that deserve the time, that need the effort, that need the help, you know? So don't focus on the negative energy in your life. Don't focus on the negative people in your life. Focus on the positive ones, the ones that want to help, the ones that want to give back, the ones that need the help. 
And you'd be surprised what comes out of it. Um, Mizzy, you're a wonderful human being. I appreciate you for everything you do, for this opportunity you've afforded me and given me here, a platform to speak and share my story, and hopefully to share a number of other stories um, from a bunch of other people. <clears throat> uh, hopefully, you've all seen how bad things can get, and they got a lot worse with all the things in between. And um, as we go through, the rest will be positivity. And you'll get to hear all the positive stories about the positive people in this place and about uh, the positive environment and the positive community we all have uh, here with Gamers We Care. And um, uh, I look forward to bringing that to you. I look forward to sharing those experiences with you. And uh, just keep fighting, guys. Just keep fighting and keep your head up. Think positive and lean on a friend when, you need, when you're down and you need some help. I'll leave it at that there. And uh, yeah, is that it? I have not looked at the screen here. Oh, there I am. Yeah, I can't do this. I'll never look at myself on, on, on camera ever again because, uh, whew, woo, woo, gosh, these faces. <laughs> All right, let me get out of here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, episode three coming up. I'm not sure who's doing it. If it's Mizzy, I'm probably going to be Mizzy, and then maybe Joe after that. Have a great day.